I found another job up on the station. He said to me, he said, can you kill a sheep? <laughs> well, I said, oh, I suppose I can, yeah. <laughs> he said, well, get in the Land Rover and down the shed, there's a couple of killers down there. He said, just get one, and he said, and kill it and skin it and that, and said, and bring it back. I said, oh, all right. So I went down there and well, I didn't know it was one of his rams. I cut its throat and <laughs> He said, you killed a ram. <laughs> Born in Broken Hill in the early 1940s, Bobby Shamros, a direct descendant of the Afghan cameleers that built and used the Broken Hill Mosque, spent his early childhood on land near the mosque where it stood isolated on the northern fringe of Broken Hill. We was living in the block of land which Dad owned around the camel camp here. For some reason, I decided to run away and and uh, go to Adelaide and look, see if I could find my mother. Well, I knew she was in Adelaide, at, de down at the, in Norwood, at the parade, but I didn't know how to get there. But I knew how to get on the train, I had a free ride down. And once I got to Adelaide, I got off at the station, you know, being a little bloke, only nine, ten year old, no case or nothing, just the clothes I had on me. And uh, I went down to Rundle Street and there's a, I've seen these funny little old trams, you know. I think I said to the conductor, I've lost me money, I want to go to the Nord Parade. And I went there and rocked up in the pub and, and mum nearly fell over when she seen me, you know. And I think she just about fainted. <coughs> and she said, what are you doing here? I said, well, I'll come down to see you, you know. And she said, I think you'd better go back home. Then it took about five days to get back here because there's no bitumen or nothing. All dirt roads, and back tracks. Because back in them days, uh, a kid could go missing for three or four days and they wouldn't worry, you know. And anyhow, I got back there and he, he said, you mustn't do that. He said, you mustn't run away like that. I let it go for about three or four, probably months, and I decided I'm gonna go again. This continued for some time as Bobby ran away from Broken Hill and traveled widely in the south and east of Australia. At one point, he was recognized while on a school trip by his uncle, who arranged for him to be sent back home. My uncle, my grandfather's eldest son, was down there on holidays with his family, and he always spotted me, and he said to me, how long have you been here? I said, well, I was in the home in Adelaide and I've been here for nearly two years. The last time I managed to get away and, and, and I got the, got down there without getting caught. And uh, my mother kept me for about probably anywhere between four to six months. I work school a lot, but when I went to Adelaide, I, I was in grade uh, four here. When I went to Adelaide, I put myself up to grade seven. And a few days later, I was back into grade four. I was going to the Norwood school. Next minute, the welfare rocks up. And the lady said, you've got to come with me. She took me and took me out of this boy's home out there. I must have been 11 or 11 and a half or something like that when I went in there. And I was there for, from that time up until I was 14. Mum come and visited a couple of times. Uh, I've never seen no one else in between. And then all of a sudden I got whisked off to another place down the southeast. After that, then I got the call to say, you're going back home to Broken Hill. I got back to Broken Hill here and my uncle picked me up at the station and I went with my grandfather for a while. You know, rough, everything was rough. You know, you, sometimes you had a bed and other times you had the swag on the ground, you know, laid on the ground on the mattress and that. And I just travelled around all the time after that. All around the country, went down the south east, met my wife, Janet. Bobby and his wife, Janet, have been together since they met in their teenage years. And he said hello, and I said hello, and he said, do you want to come to the pictures tonight? 
So we started to go out with each other. Almost immediately, Bobby left to work over in Western Australia for two years, only returning to Broken Hill after being laid off, where him and Janet picked back up where they left off. Anyhow, things worked out right for us in the finish. And I think, well, I'm glad I did fight for him. And I can think now that I struck the jackpot with him because he's been a marvellous husband and father. And I'm nearly 80, so for 63 years we've been together now. Bobby is now the caretaker and guide for the Broken Hill Mosque, bringing his unique insight, having grown up around the men and women who lived, worked and prayed here. He also looks to the past, working with the council and community to ensure that the graves of his ancestors are recognised and marked appropriately. What they used to do when they used to bury them, the ones that haven't put tombstones on, they used to put a stick each end, write their name on the stick, and over the years, the, the sticks have just gone. The council never kept the record of them, and the undertaker never kept the record of them. Of course, the simple reason is because the, the old cameleers used to bury their own. The undertaker would take them out there, the old cameleer blokes, they'd dig the hole, and do the burial and everything. Bobby's father, Shamrose Khan, a camelier, is also buried in Broken Hill, though initially his grave was unmarked. My dad died in 1952. He's buried out here. And no one ever done his grave up with all the money and that, that he had, and no one ever put anything on there. And I, I was trying for years to find out where he was, where he's actually buried, because I weren't here. All I've done is uh, I've got a cement block put there, and put a tile there and just wrote his name, Shamrose Khan, on it. Bobby's story and those of the descendants of the Cameleers, who have memories of the early 20th century, are a reminder of the legacy of the early Afghan Cameleers and the importance of sites like the Broken Hill Mosque in honouring the migrant groups that built Outback Australia.